Wong Wah Ken, stash away. Um, we're almost old friends now, man. Um, I remember talking to you back when you started uh, Stash Away years ago. So now you're, you, you were the biggest then and you're still the biggest now, but you extended the lead. Um, yeah, so, so I guess just, just in a very, very short you know, introduction, just tell me what's been going on with you, man. Yeah, it's, it's nice to be with you. And yeah, I remember we did that HTV interview at, at our offices. And in two years, boy, how things have changed. Uh, yes, we were the first. And now, you know, the first robot advisor, and, and now there's a bit of a, uh, a field going on, make things more competitive, we want participants. We're extending our lead, like you said, I think we're still the largest in Malaysia, definitely the largest in, in Singapore. We recently also announced uh, that we manage 1 billion US dollars under management. So that's a huge milestone for, for us, and I would say that overall and balance, things are going quite well. I am on your podcast, so things are... Definitely going well. <laughs> well, that's it's a big honor for me. I, I let, let's let's start with um, GameStop, right? It's mm, it's really it's really well. yeah got so much momentum. Um, yeah. Just just yesterday, a lot of uh, investors were burnt. The platforms closed down. Um, I guess just just w- what happened in, in your view? What happened and, and what sh- how should we make sense of it all? Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a huge kind of confluence of events, right? So on, on, on one hand, you have hedge fund, you know, Johnny hedge fund short, sell, short sellers who have a lot of capital and insight on their hands. They are targeting weak companies like GameStop who haven't made a profit to, to do short selling. And then on the other hand, you have these uh, individual investors and, and borderline anarchists who want to take it to the man. Lah. And you put together uh, leverage investments through, through options. You put together commission-free trading through Robinhood and the like, low-cost trading and the like, and you get the situation where basically once the hedge funds bet that it will go down, and then the tide of retail investors bet that it's going to go up, and looks like the, the, the little guys club together and look like they're winning. And at the same time, like you said, um, it can go south very quickly, especially when you have options and you're out of the money and you get margin call. So if people are not careful and just go along with the hype, especially since the level of sophistication has been going down less and less with, with Reddit in the years, with all these people being stuck at home in the pandemic, you can really lose your pants, you know? So, so I would say that it's a great so-called moral victory for the retail investor in the States. But also on the other hand, the, the mom and pop investors and the very new Robinhood investors should really be careful and not buy so much into the hype. Yeah, it's it's kind of like morphed into something a lot bigger than um, than originally envisaged. It's become a bit like um, you know us against the one percenters. You know, there was a lot of um, hate against the billionaires and the Wall Street the hedge fund guys. And if you read some of the comments on Reddit, it was actually quite. Um, it's almost it was almost militant, you know. Um, yeah. let, let's go crush those billionaires. Let's take this to the mm. moon. It, it was mad, mm. and the amount of momentum behind it was crazy. How? how mm. it, it seems like invest pe- people's. Mo- it, it's this it seems that things are changing very fast, right? Um, mm. did, did you get a sense of that? Well, we, we see the general trend, right? Like, I think a lot of the enablers came up in the last two years, and then it's only sparked by the, the pandemic where people are stuck at home. They can't go to sports games and bet and all that. And, and then stimulus checks were sent out, right? So, so I, I don't think anyone foresaw this coming. But now that it's here, you can see how, it, how we got here, right? You can look back in the mirror. So, like you said, it's, it's, it's taking it up to the man and it's everyone being very exuberant. So that's not new. Greed and fear, and it's a very potent mix and it's a very fine balance, is not new, right? It's just that we have new platforms, we have new um, securities instruments, like all these options, and you have new platforms like Robinhood, which is making it very easy for a lot of people to do the same thing and communicate at the same time. So that is new, right? And, and I think that's why the individual investor really needs to pay attention to all this rather than just be formal and say, oh, I wish I had a part of this. 
because there is a lot of errors to go along with these kind of things. But yeah, a lot of people don't realize, right? But the the whole commission free trading thing is already here. Um, I think you can get an eToro account, and that's that's very easy, right? And you fill out a few forms, and then off you go. And then the whole era of commission free trading is is coming. I think the brokers are preparing for the day. It's it could be as 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 soon as two to three years away, literally, right? Mm -hmm. Where you don't pay mm -hmm. any brokerage on your trades. Um, mm -hmm. And then on those platforms as well, Ken, you, you also realize this is whole idea of copy trading, right? Where you can just follow other people. You don't have to do any work. And in some in mm. some sense, you, you see that with the robo-advisories, right? You just follow a model portfolio. Um, I mean, what do you think about that? Do, do you think people should be more involved in investing or, or not? Well, I think let's unpack that, right? You, by and large, you have two ways of managing your money. Either you outsource it to a fund manager like like Unitra, it's like a robot advisor like us. Or you do it yourself. And you pick stocks, like our, our good friend and your boss, Malik, who, is, uh, who loves the multi baggers and uh, value guys, right? Who, who have learned from, from, from Benjamin Graham. And then um, basically you choose your poison, right? What platform do you use? And like you said, you could either copy someone who has shown good performance, or you can do your own homework and, and pick your own stocks, right? So, so how Sashua is set up is really by going back to the fundamentals, um, like you said, of efficient portfolios. But we take it a step further because not only do we blend ETFs together to form different portfolios of different risks which people can choose from, but we also changed asset allocation from time to time using economic data to help us decide what's the asset allocation given the weather. Right? Like you're on a beach right now, it's very, very nice. <clears throat> then you should wear a singlet and shorts. But if it turns cold and it starts raining, then you need to take out an umbrella and a raincoat. So that's the same with multi year, multi decade investing. You can't just go, okay, this is the portfolio to end all portfolios and then write it out through thick and thin. Passive investing and portfolios of ETS is not like a wedding, you know, not like your marriage. It's not for life. You should change your portfolio from time to time, which is what we do. So it's we'll talk about active and passive investing later, but I would say we are more on the semi-passive side. So to 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 come back to your question, yes, there are a lot more choices, but I think ultimately investors should still think about the same things, right? What's their risk? What's their investment timeline? What's their investment goals? How much are those investment goals? and then choose the platforms that really serve them. There's really not one silver bullet, right? You need to put it together, decide how the tool helps you, and then work the plan. Uh, 